Um, good morning. It's Tamara Rubin, Lead Safe Mama. And I realized in these past few videos this week, I haven't been introducing myself to total strangers. So I am a mother of lead poisoned children. My kids were poisoned in 2005. They were acutely poisoned when we renovated our house. And um, we hired a contractor who promised to use lead safe work practices and renovation, but instead used an open flame tor torch to burn the paint off the exterior of our home. And my children inhaled the fumes and were instantly acutely poisoned. So that's a bit of my background. And since then, I have been doing childhood lead poisoning prevention activities, including consumer goods testing. And I use x-ray fluorescence technology to test things that people have around their homes, mostly that readers send in to me, some things that I grab at their stores, um, or every now and then things I get at the store or buy online. So in these videos, I'm sharing things with you that may or may not have lead, and what uh, my concerns are about those items and that class of items. Hello, Bryn. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna talk today primarily about mugs and a couple other things. So let's start with Ray Dunn. I have a bunch of these. So um, these are Ray Dunn mugs from Marshalls last year. And what I found about Ray Dunn is that they, um, can have unsafe levels of lead, mostly in the colorful decorative elements. So this is very low lead in the white. The white is in the like 30 parts per million range, 30 to 40, but the uh, colorful decorative floral elements can be almost a thousand parts per million lead. In this particular case, it's not necessarily touching uh, where your lip is on the mug, but it's still, you know, a problem for me because why is a company making brand new product, in this case it was 2018, making them with lead. They don't need to do that. There's lots of alternatives and, you know, we really should have more corporate responsibility. And Ray Dunn is a big company and um, really should not have this problem. Um, so uh, that's just one example. And that's on the blog and you can find that on the blog. Another Ray Dunn piece is, is, is this one. And it's kind of similar in, in um, that the, the white part, regardless of its matte or shiny on these, is, is low lead. Um, another brand that people have asked me about is the um, Hearth and Home by Chip and Joanna Gaines. This is one of their pieces that I got last year. Again, I haven't really got that many, and this is on the blog. I thought that this might be high lead because it's got gold sparkly bits, but it isn't. Um, it's low lead, relatively low lead. I still wouldn't drink out of it, wouldn't use it in my home, but you might choose to. I'm sure that it was leach tested at the time of manufacture, and my concern is not what happens at the time of manufacture with a ceramic item like a mug, but what happens long term. I have had um, Worked, I've worked with lots of families in their homes where they've had high lead mugs that they use every day where there's lead on the inside and the outside. And in those cases, yeah, it might have passed leach testing at the time of manufacture, but 5, 10, 15 years later, after daily use with something acidic like coffee, how do you know it's not going to be leaching? Um, so then we'll go to IKEA. The IKEA mugs, these you'll see on the blog soon. I've got a couple, I got different colors um, are relatively low lead uh, to no lead. Um, my recent experience with the IKEA is that I, well, in the past they've been lead free. Some of the glazes, more often than not, the colorful glazes have low lead, like in the 100 to 200 parts per million range, and the whites are going to be negative to um, very, very low lead, like in the 30 to 40 parts per million range. And so I don't have a huge concern about IKEA mugs, but they aren't something that I would want to drink out of in my home necessarily, just on principle. And that's a little bit more politically motivated. Um, so you can see my mugs, and apparently I'm drinking two things this morning. This is my, this is my tea, um, and uh, this is my mug that I drink out of every morning. One of them, I have a few. Mm, I love my Japanese in my cha. Um, so, you know, those, those are uh, okay, and they're always negative, the glass mugs. And then this is an old for life mug. This is my coffee that my husband just brought me. 
And the older for life mugs often are negative for lead, but I just recently tested some of the for life mugs, which advertise as lead free. <laughs> and um, yes, it is delicious. The coffee is delicious. Um, and the the mugs that are from for life that advertise as lead free actually aren't. So the new ones. So I no longer recommend that brand. Um, since we're talking about drinking, I thought I'd mention these guys. They're on the blog, and I think it's really important for you to know, <laughs> it's really funny actually for me, that that all of these test positive, all of this type of Pizza Hut, McDonald's, um, Burger King, Pepsi, Coke, whatever those things, all of these glasses from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, pretty much, are going to be positive for high levels of toxicants, tens of thousands of parts per million lead in most cases. And it's really upsetting to me that most people don't react unless they have the exact glass that I post. So I'm like, oh, well, yeah, those have lead I, I see the care bear ones have lead but i don't i have a smurf one or i have the smurf you know surfboard one not the smurf birthday one how do i know if that has lead well the smurf ones all have lead the care bear ones all have lead they did they just all have lead so um these are a problem because if you, if you look at this little guy i have actually several examples but the colors are very worn from what they were initially and i um will put some up on the blog where you can see the difference between a worn one and a not worn one and we're talking about a microscopic amount of lead that wears off into your kitchen environment into your world into your food and people are like well it's only on the outside how is that a problem well where does your hand go if it's only on the outside your hand touches the outside your child's hand touches the outside and usually you're not like you're sitting at the table you're drinking your drink holding the outside and then you're eating your apple and you're not washing your hands in between doing those things so even if it was only a concern because of touching um that's enough to not have you use something like this and other people are like well it's only a tiny amount of lead well um government agencies agree Hi, Donna Joy. <laughs> um, government agencies agree that there's no safe lead level uh, exposure for children. And any amount of lead can harm a human. And government agencies um, also agree that that, that the, it just takes a microscopic amount of lead to poison a child. And so what we're seeing here is a microscopic amount of lead that wears off into your kitchen environment a little bit at a time. So these are definitely a problem, even though it isn't well studied, although there are a couple studies. There's a study from Europe, I believe it's from England or Ireland, and that's on my blog, that shows that there's a potential concern for the lead coming off of the outside of glasses like this. And basically, if you have something like this, only consider it a collector's item don't use it don't give it to your children and please consider not having it um, I would really uh, prefer to see these uh, chucked and people are like well if you throw it in the landfill then you're causing other environmental concerns I'm like well I have a post about that too I have over 2,000 posts on my blog with answers to questions but if you throw this in the landfill um, it's one less person that'll use it or maybe 20 or 30 less people that are that'll use it and then maybe the next generation will be that much more smart um, in terms of coming up with uh, um, uh, solutions for disposal of toxic items um, we just want to get these out of the hands of our children and that's the very important thing Then another thing I thought I'd show you for fun someone sent me a bunch of these uh, these will be posted on the blog shortly. This is this is all basically leaded. I if you have anything like this, it's a problem. <laughs> um, I just am doing a quick little pass through here of these things. I'm not going to tell you all the lead levels, but you can look them up just in case um, you're curious or have something similar. Um, and, and people are like, well, it's only on the edge, a lot of cases. In a lot of cases, the lead is only on the edge of the plate. Well, uh, yeah, but the food doesn't just touch the middle of the plate. It touches the whole plate. And if you think that the food just touches the middle of the plate, you're delusional. <laughs> um, it, it really touches the whole plate. And you, again, if it's wearing, if the, if the lead is wearing off into your environment, it's not just wearing off onto your food. It's wearing off into your dishwasher, into your cooking environment. And I'm not trying to instill paranoia or OCD. I'm just trying to say, hey, 
get some lead-free dishes. It's super easy. What's the problem? They're really not complicated. So, um, you know, why worry about something? I don't want you to worry about things. I don't worry about these things. I just get rid of them and have very simple, clean, uh, lead-free dishes in my home. One nice example of a lead-free dish that I found recently is this from Ikea. It's this white glass that's kind of like Corel, and it's a little bit more heavy duty. This particular one has a pattern, but they have the ones without patterns. And I don't know, if, you know, you can see the glass quality. The interesting thing about these is they have this like matte on the back and shiny on the front, but these are lead free. Um, and Ikea has a full line of lead free uh, white glass products. And here I am the master of the segue. Uh, speaking of white glass, um, if you have any of these, please don't use them this holiday season. This is super high lead. Usually these are in the level of 60, 70, 100,000 parts per million lead. And the amount of lead that's toxic in an item intended for use by children is anything as low as 90 parts per million lead in the paint glazer coating. And I don't know if you can see clearly from this, I'll, I'll get a flashlight and do this, but there's little bits of um, paint missing here. And again, where does that paint go? That paint goes into your kitchen environment. And does it cause acute exposure? Probably not. But it adds to your chronic exposure in your home uh, from all of the sources. And why would you want chronic low-level lead exposure? Low-level low lead exposure at levels as low as 0 0.43 have shown have been shown to cause uh, complications like infertility or difficulty with conception, which is the same thing, um, but in men and women, um, or uh, low birth weight in newborns and and other birth and uh, pregnancy complications with levels as low as 0 0.43 micrograms per deciliter, micrograms of lead per deciliter of blood, which is what's called a blood lead level. And so if trace levels that low can cause harm, why would you want to potentially contribute to your infertility, your child's infertility in the future? And again, people say, hey, but it's only on the outside. And so then I'd just like to show you, you've got this other one right here. This one's also very high lead. These are both Pyrex, I believe. Let me see, I don't know, my, one might be a fire king. Um, that's Pyrex. <laughs> um, and what people do is they stack them. And when they stack them, they then put them in their kitchen cabinet and then they unstack them to use them, but they don't necessarily wash them because they already washed them to put them away in the kitchen cabinet. So the outside little scraping bits that that wore off of this one that was on the inside of this one are on the inside of here. And then you're possibly, potentially adding that to your food. So there's really no reason to have lead in your home and your kitchen. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's just not worth the risk. It, again, uh, my children have permanent brain damage from being lead poisoned as babies. They have other issues as well, plaque psoriasis, sensory processing disorder, OCD, ADHD, the list goes on. We're full al alphabet soup over here in, in the Rubin family. So I just like people to know that the lead free choices are out there. The lead free choices are inexpensive and they're accessible. And why expose your family just because it hasn't been studied? If something hasn't been studied in this country, that doesn't mean it's safe. That just means it hasn't been studied and there hasn't been any corporate oversight for that particular company or that particular industry or that particular line of products. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Um, Thank you for being here. And I'm trying to line up home visits for the months of January 2020 and April 2020. So please do check out the links for that above or to the side or wherever they are on this on your version of uh, watching this. I am going to be traveling all over the country seeing families. And I help you go through your home and find what's toxic and what's safe. And then I make recommendations for having a safer home and um, cleaning things up to, to be safer for your family. And while my visit isn't cheap because I have to fly to you, um, usually the solutions that I suggest implementing are fairly inexpensive and I, I give you some coaching along the way and I support you after our visit. So I look forward to hearing from one or two of you because this um, uh, these home visits help support the other advocacy work I do, the writing I, I post on the blog and all of that. All right, everybody, thanks for being here and I'll talk to you soon and please share this video. 
Tamara Rubin, Let's Safe Mama, letsafemama.com, Let's Safe Mama on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, even though I'm not really on those other platforms much yet, mostly just here. All right, talk to you later. And if you want to produce a Let's Safe Mama TV show, I'm all for it. Totally would love to do this as a reality show. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. Have a great weekend.